What's up everyone, Will and Alex here and today we're in London recreating photos from our 1950s travel book. Let's see what's changed and what stayed the same. Good morning everyone. So first full day here in London. We just woke up and now we're heading to King's Cross Station to take the underground. We're gonna grab some food on the way. I'm hoping for a nice full English breakfast. <laughs> Definitely looking forward to it and having a full day here in cloudy London town. One of the first things we did on our stop in London is grab an English breakfast. Lots of pubs have these all day long and we got ours for 10 pounds. I got the vegetarian one and Will got the normal. We're at a place called the Water Rat. It's really great so far and they have a really cute dog named Toffee. We just had a good breakfast and at the stroke of noon, we are on our way to Hyde Park. We got confirmation from the waiter that one of the photos that says it could be Hyde Park or Kensington Park is in fact Hyde Park. So we are on our way from King's Cross. We took the Piccadilly line 12 minutes from King's Cross to Hyde Park Corner. The blurb on the subway reads, Hyde Park is the largest of London's parks extending to over 340 acres. At the beginning of the 17th century, the park was opened to the public. The 19th century saw Hyde Park reach its peak as a place for society to parade. Hyde Park has been the setting for military encampments, duels, celebrations, firework displays, and most notably, the Great Exhibition of 1851 in the Crystal Palace. We're headed to the picture spot, we think. Yeah, the waiter said that it was a Hyde Park corner, so we're heading there now. Ooh, yeah, that looks like the oh, columned yeah. building right That's there. Good. Easy peasy. I can to the photo. That's in the background of this. So we know it's taken from inside the park. The picture is coming <laughs> from inside of the park. Yes. All right. The secrets of Dumbledore coming to cinema as April 8th. A lot of Harry Potter stuff in London, not surprisingly. I appreciate it. Like I Hugh wish there was Grant. more Harry Potter Hugh stuff. Grant is the lead. <laughs> Who chose that? Crossing the street. Wasn't Hugh Grant Dumbledore? Or no, that was Jude Law. Jude, Jude Law, sorry, not Hugh Grant. <laughs> yeah, Jude Law is weirder. young Dumbledore. <laughs> Hugh Grant's not in it. He, yeah, he's not in it. <laughs> so everyone knows. It's definitely taken from further down that way. Because the angle of this, plus this is on the like end of it. The angle of these and the, and the angle of the building yeah, right there. Further, they need to be further back. We need to be like behind some trees. Okay. This tree. Huh. Hmm. Mm. You can see that now. See this? You can kind of see that. So one of the top things to do in London on a beautiful day, such as today, yeah, it's a little bit cloudy, but still, we're not having rain and it's gonna be around 60 degrees today, is to take a stroll through Hyde Park. There's tons and tons of acres here and paths. There's a lot of people running and biking. Huge green space that was actually commissioned as a hunting ground by, by King Henry VIII and is still used today for military parades and festivals. We are walking a little bit through Hyde Park and we are making our way to Buckingham Palace, which is about a mile from where we are right now. Mm -hmm. It's a straight shot. There's tons of pictures to retake in that area, obviously, so we'll just knock a couple of those out. Park, if you cross the road, you'll find the Duke of Wellington Memorial. You can walk through the gate and go across the street up through Constitution Hill. As you walk another half mile, you'll reach the Buckingham Palace. Additionally, behind us, the arch, you can actually go up and see a view from above.
as well said from Wellington Arch, it's a straight shot through the Jubilee Greenway to Buckingham Palace. You cannot miss it. Our picture in the book of Buckingham Palace is actually a picture of the changing of the guard, as you'll see behind me. And this happens whenever the Queen is there every other day, and this sign says it is at... 11. 11. And it happens for about a half an hour. We're here past that time, so we'll just get a picture from the angle that this was taken from. But note that if you want to see the changing of the guard, it's totally possible if you wake up a little bit early. The changing of the guard is a popular thing to witness in London, and unfortunately, we didn't plan ahead to see it. If you are interested, I've linked a video guide below, which I think is very thorough and well done. Nice. It's not nearly as interesting as the original photo. That's what we can get today. Cool. Cool. Got it. Well. So as you walk out and behind the flower bed of the Buckingham Palace, on the other side of the palace is the St. James Park. We're now going to walk through there on our way over to St. James Palace. St. James Palace is the most senior royal palace in London. It was built on the site of a leper hospital dedicated to St. James the Less. The book says St. James Palace was built by Henry VIII in 1532. Changing of the guard ceremony takes place here when the Queen is not in residence at Buckingham Palace. The book seems to be very interested in the changing of the guard ceremonies. <laughs> While it is no longer a residence of the monarch, it is the ceremonial meeting place of the Accession Council, some official offices, societies, and collections, as well as the London residence of several members of the royal family. Okay. Sure. Nailed it. After that, it is time to regroup, rest our feet a bit. We stopped here at the Red Lion, a moody little pub we really enjoyed. Where are we walking to? We are walking to Piccadilly Circus now. I'm gonna have to check the map again because I haven't looked at it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I think we are at the Canadian Museum now. <laughs> what a guess. <laughs> Why would they have a Canadian As museum? You can tell by the flags. <laughs> it's really called the Canada House. Okay. By the Commission of Canada and the United Kingdom. Hmm. All right. We were going to Piccadilly Circus by way of the National Gallery to retake this photo, which reads Trafalgar Square seen through terrace columns of the National Gallery, is a favorite site for political demonstrations on Southside Tower Nelson Monument. Good news. <laughs> okay, there's Good a radiator news. there. Good news, getting into the National Gallery is free, so we're able to go over there across the way and get our picture in front of the columns. The National Gallery was founded in 1824 and has been at this location since 1838. It houses a collection of over 2,300 paintings. The columns are out there, I think. This is a very popular picture among Influencers. Influencers. <laughs> no, I want one. Anyone. Trafalgar Square is a very busy place. It's named after the British naval victory in the Napoleonic Wars with France and Spain in 1805. The Nelson's Column in the center of the square was built to commemorate Vice Admiral Horatio Nelson, who led the British to victory during the battle while also unfortunately losing his life. Another picture we taken for today of Charles Bigger Square. 
from the columns at the National Gallery and it's free to enter and there's a huge collection and there's bathrooms in there and an espresso bar. So we're heading from the National Gallery to Piccadilly Circus which is a nine minute walk and a really cute walk past a lot of restaurants and uh, yeah we gotta go take a picture of the memorial fountain there. Piccadilly Circus is of course a popular road junction and public space in London's West End. The circus part of the name comes from the Latin word meaning circle, which refers to the round open space at the street's junction. Piccadilly refers to a building called Piccadilly Hall, which belonged to Robert Baker, a tailor famous for selling piccadills or piccadillies a term used for collars at the time. Today, it's become a very busy meeting place and tourist attraction on its own. You really do feel like you're in the center of everything. And we kind of literally were. We're definitely <laughs> directly in the middle. Chaos ensues. According to the book, Piccadilly Circus is one of city's best known features. It is a circle formed by the junction of five streets. The statue of Eros stands atop the central fountain. So we're standing at median at Piccadilly Circus of the Shaftesbury Memorial Monument, which is located just to my left, viewer's right. <laughs> <laughs> the fountain was built in the late 1890s to commemorate the philanthropic works of the 7th Earl of Shaftesbury. He was a Victorian politician and philanthropist known for replacing child labor with school education. We love to see it. So we are on our way now from Piccadilly Circus, walking back through the National Gallery in Trumpler Square down to Whitehall and the Horse Guards Palace. Hopefully the horses are out and uh, on display today. And then we are gonna continue on the 10 Downing Street where the Prime Minister lives and works. After that, hopefully we'll get down to Westminster, see Big Ben and the Eye, and uh, that might wrap up the afternoon. Maybe we'll move on to an old pub. I was looking at the ye old Cheshire Cheese and the Seven Stars, the oldest pub in London. So, let's go. Work it, work it. <laughs> it's a jam. It's a good picture. <laughs> First off, we were headed to White Hall to retake this photo, which reads Ceremony of Trooping the Color is held at the Horse Guards Parade, White Hall. Luckily, when I typed in Horse Guards Parade, it came right up in Google Maps. The ceremony of Trooping the Color is also known as the King's Birthday Parade, an event that happens each June. Tickets become available online in March. I'll put a link to a good site about it below. It also details how to watch it for free as a member of the public. There is also a Household Cavalry Museum nearby if you'd like to learn more about the cavalrymen and the horses. Tickets are £10 for adults. The picture spot is right behind us. It threw us for a second when we entered because we thought that it was this main building over here at the clock tower. And then we look closer at the picture and we're like, that's not it. But we came through the gate. It's free to enter. There's just guards like everywhere. You can enter in back here to where the horses would do their thing. And it looks like pretty cool. I'll put some info below if you want to look into buying a ticket to attend one of these shows and I'll tell you some more about it. On our way out of the grounds, we came upon what I think is the Dismounted Parade, which happens every day at 4 p.m.
From there, we made our way to retake this photo, which reads, 10 Downing Street is the home of the Prime Minister, equivalent of the U.S. White House. If you're familiar with London, you'd know that we couldn't get anywhere near this house. We were met with a security gate and guards blocking the street, so this is the best picture we could get. These security measures exist because of an IRA mortar attack in February of 1991. Since then, security measures have been greatly increased from when the original photo was taken. All right, moving right along. We are now in the Westminster area, home to Big Ben, the Parliament, Westminster Abbey, and much more. It's one of the most touristy parts of London. However, it is absolutely gorgeous, and you should definitely make a stop here at least to take a few pictures. The book has a lot to say about Westminster Abbey. The caption reads, Westminster Abbey has been the setting of the coronation of English monarchs from the year 1066, which saw the crowning of Harold II, last of the Saxon kings, and William the Conqueror, down to the recent coronation of Elizabeth II. Aww. The Abbey, officially called Collegiate Church of St. Peter in Westminster, is one of the finest examples of early English architecture in England. Poet's Corner, Longfellow is the only American poet included, is one of the high spots for visitors. Another is Henry VII's Magnificent Chapel. The third is the Old Coronation Chair. It's possible to visit Westminster Abbey. You can attend a service for free, or you can buy a ticket to visit online ahead of time. You'll need to choose an entrance time and pay about £27 per adult to visit. There's also a hidden highlights tour, which looks super interesting. All right, after that, we made a quick pit stop at a nearby pub and then kept on with our quest. We're now crossing the Westminster Bridge to take another photo of the Parliament buildings. The book reads, the Houses of Parliament by the Thames with Big Ben in the Tower make the most celebrated landmark in England. Probably you've heard chimes of Big Ben by radio. I have no idea what that last part means. This building confuses me because I think it is formally called the Palace of Westminster, but then also the Parliamentary Estate. I've always called it just the Parliament Building, but I think that's wrong. <laughs> Someone who knows, please correct me in the comments. We're currently on the bridge, which offers great views, but unfortunately it's not to the view that we need. So we need to cross the river and walk that way. We found our next picture spot, the Parliament Building. Mm -hmm. Taking from across the way, it's pretty nice. Minus the scaffolding. Along the Thames River. It is possible to visit the estate. Guided tours are offered in English, but do seem to book up weeks or months in advance. The 90 minute guided tour costs 32 pounds per adult. There are also free tours for UK residents and free online guided tours for anyone to view, which I will link below. From there, we made our way along the river to dinner. First was an appetizer at the Ye Olde Cheshire Cheese, a favorite of Will's from his backpacking trip after college. From there, we walked to the Seven Stars, which had the most adorable pub cat I've ever seen. Mr. Governor, you are so sweet in your collar. You are really sweet. This bar is also popular with lawyers and I thought it had really interesting vibes. I overheard a girl next to me complaining about some guy saying, quote, he's never even had an NFT or a Twitter. Dang, what a loser. From there, we went to retake one last photo in London. This one of St. Paul's Cathedral, which reads, St. Paul's Cathedral, Renaissance masterpiece of Sir Christopher Wren, stands on summit of Ludgate Hill, a landmark for miles. Visit the Whispering Gallery. 
which all sounds very intriguing. You can visit the cathedral in the daytime for 20 pounds for adults and nine pounds for children. The Whispering Gallery is referring to the circular balcony right beneath the dome in which whispers can be heard from across a wide area. As of April 2023, it's closed to the public. Hey everyone, it's after dinner and we went to first the Ye Olde Cheshire Cheese Pub and then we stopped by the Seven Stars which claims to be the oldest pub in London, built in 1602 and was not burned down in the 1666 fire. We're walking a little bit east, and behind us is the St. Paul's Cathedral, and I tried to take a picture the best I could, but I'm pretty sure the picture in the book was taken from one of these buildings. It's definitely taken above the rooftops, but we do what we could do, and I think it looks pretty good. Yep. We spent the rest of our time in London with friends and family before making our way up north to visit more friends and retake a photo of Hadrian's Wall. I will link that video below. It's a good one. As always, we'll be back in London because we have many more photos to retake. Some of them are actually going to be really hard, especially this one of the Chelsea Arts Ball New Year's Eve party. We're obviously not members of the Chelsea Arts Club, so that will be a fun one to figure out. Thank you guys so much for watching and make sure to subscribe to follow us along on our journey to recreate all 2000 photos. Till the next one, bye.